my name is Robin Mitchell and welcome to this podcast for Electropages. In today's episode, we are joined by Silicon Labs and two pretty cool looking guys who are going to dive into the, rate, uh, the latest stuff they've been doing on predictive maintenance and the solutions that they've come up with. So if you two guys could just start by introducing yourselves to the audience, what it is, what you do and why you like doing it. Yeah, sounds good. Hey, Robin. Hey, Electropages. Thanks for having us. Um, my name is Tristan Cool. I'm a product marketing manager at Silicon Labs. Um, I oversee our predictive maintenance and condition monitoring offering. Um, Silicon Labs is an IoT pure play company, so we make uh, SOCs and modules for a variety of IoT protocols, uh, thousands and thousands of applications. The one I look after is predictive maintenance and condition monitoring. And the really exciting part about that application is that it overlaps very nicely with uh, artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning. So I'll let Tomas introduce himself and tell you a bit more about that. Hey, hi everyone, it's Tomas Dara uh, great to be here. I'm product manager at Silicon Labs working on the artificial intelligence, machine learning and IoT initiatives. And indeed, as Tristan mentioned, we try to enhance many use cases and enable our platforms to have better and better solutions and, and broader and broader ecosystem for, for enabling more and more uh, machine learning applications. Fantastic. And just for uh, the audience who may be wandering out there, yes, there is a pet bird in one of the audience members' uh, rooms. So would you like to just give a quick description of what the bird is and why it makes a lot of noise? Yeah, in the background, there is some zebra finches of my daughter. So if you hear some beep, that's from the birds. <laughs> I try, try to cover them with a blanket, but it doesn't really help much. They still doesn't think it's evening. <laughs> Fantastic. So I would like to, to go to uh, first direct my questioning to um, Tristan. And so the first thing I'd like to ask you is, uh, what is it that you guys are actually working on at the moment, like the latest things that you guys are ready to ship out that's relating to um, things like uh, predictive maintenance and AI? Certainly. Okay, great. So the very latest thing on the topic is I'd recommend going to check our Works With conference. We host a conference every year. This year it was virtual called Works With. You can see all the content on demand. You'll see Tomas and I gave a series of talks on these applications, how to set up different partner suites, different tools for model training. Um, so that is the, the latest thing off the presses from a conference perspective. But to answer your question, um, what our customers are using, we've launched or announced two upcoming launches, two um, parts of ours. So the first being the FG28. So the FG28 is a sub gigahertz radio SOC um, with a microcontroller and everything, right? It's a, one of our SOC parts. It's a, one of our newest parts. Uh, that will have the AI ML libraries and, and performance uh, features on this part. We also have the SIW917, which is a Wi-Fi 6 with BLE combo chip with that same AI ML MVP engine. So customers can use this feature suite under a number of different IoT protocols, whether they're in the sub gigahertz space, whether they're in the 2.4 space, a 15.4 mesh environment, or Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi to cloud, there's a Silicon Lab solution with AIML. So just to reframe, FG28 and the SIW917 are the two latest parts in the Silicon Labs catalog offering these features. And so these are basically like IoT socks that will uh, do some kind of edge, uh, edge processing of AI um, applications. Yeah, and actually that's the point of the entire thing that these devices have a decent amount of RAM and the decent capabilities to mm -hmm. not just being used as a, as a simple radio coprocessor, but also you can squeeze in many different applications, uh, including the predictive maintenance or time series data-based uh, machine learning computing, but we also have very nice um, options uh, to, to, to run uh, audio, like a keyword detection, even some low resolution vision, what you can do with an infrared camera or with a low resolution uh, camera. Obviously the memory constraints are there because it's, it's not a supercomputer, it's really a Cortex-M33 based chip, uh, uh, 1.5 uh, megabytes of flash uh, to 56K of RAM, but still, this is pretty decent uh, that you can run a lot of applications. You can squeeze in a lot of applications. 
And what Tristan mentioned, we also have this matrix vector process. So this is the MVP engine Tristan mentioned. Uh, this is a machine learning accelerator. So you can run these machine learning inferences way more efficiently than if you would do it uh, purely on the Cortex M33 from, from uh, software using the CMC and APIs from ARM. Uh, so it's like four, eight times faster in speed and six times lower energy consumption is provided by uh, using this machine learning accelerator. So especially if you have a battery powered device, you can extend your battery life. And basically this is our, this is our sweet spot, this is our key market to squeeze in uh, applications into the radio we associate so you can have only one single uh, system on a system on a chip uh, enabling the entire application and especially if it's battery powered the power consumption is, is crucial and that is one thing I tend to see in a lot of older designs for IoT where you tend to have a lot of big chips all glued together on one big board but it's nice to be able to put everything onto one main chip that does everything it needs to do yeah uh, also there are other approaches, system approaches, where where uh, you 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 have a main big processor uh, like a Cortex A or a, a Linux core, and you may have a radio board or a radio chip next to it, as uh, because you want to communicate. And still, some customers and some some architectures are enabling a lot of uh, like wake up circuitry uh, applications, like a keyword detection, just to save more power because the big guy can sleep until the very efficient um, always listening radio chip because it's always listening by default is also listening for a keyword or listening for something that that is uh, waking up the, the entire device uh, so these always on uh, topology is also very popular in, in many applications and we are trying to enable uh, solutions to, and towards is, this and are these new stocks that you develop are they able to do the wake up for the, the wake up system that you're talking about so they go to sleep with, with the exception of one small microcontroller and it wakes up when it detects something important. Is that something that these, uh, these chips can do? Absolutely, absolutely. So um, we already have uh, many demonstrations, uh, sample applications on the GitHub released on this topic. It's a pretty robust, it's a pretty robust uh, wake up system that we can provide even in this tiny device. This is, this is why tiny ML is getting more and more popular because what was not possible before, uh, now it's possible because uh, people are working a lot to compress these algorithms, yeah. uh, figure out solutions, how to run uh, these algorithms on microcontrollers. So indeed, if you say a keyword like, hey, Google or hey, or Alexa, uh, we can listen, we can analyze in a very robust way, even if it's a noisy environment or living room environment. And the tiny M33 can take it up and decide whether if it's a big word or not. And is this engine something that Silicon Labs developed themselves? Yes, indeed. Uh, so we have developed uh, this uh, matrix vector processor in-house. Um, it's it's our own IP. Um, seems to be seems to be a very successful engine so far. It's really tiny, so you cannot compare it to to a bigger uh, NVIDIA. Jetson or, or, or something but similar, it's of course. It's supposed to be small because it's supposed to be a low energy device. Absolutely. So you don't want it to be big and beefy and, and power hungry. You want it to be quick, small and light. Absolutely. So, and that's the point. To, be, to, 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 to find that smart way where you find the right balance between the, between the, the horsepower and the efficiency, saving the battery uh, versus, versus speed. Um, and this is how you should uh, think about your application smartly. So. So what you upload to the cloud, what inference, what data you, you process on the edge, because there is always a healthy trade-off. Yeah. Like, like, like if you have uh, like a smart meter where you have completely useless data continuously coming in. And if you just want to transmit everything to the cloud, that will uh, kill the battery very, very quickly. But if you, uh, if you actually process it right there on the spot, with a very low energy, with a very efficient way, you can extend the battery life. Uh, especially in these long-range, low-power networks where, where, where you must run uh, from battery for, for, for years sometimes. And so these two new, these two new devices you've developed, um, in terms of applications, um, could you give me a bit of a more detailed um, list of what you might be able to use it in? So are we talking about industrial, industrial controllers, are we talking about automotive? What are we, what are we looking at here? 
Certainly. Okay. So the mean, just that's a good point to maybe start there. The way Silicon Labs operates is contrary to a few other vendors who have product specific marketing and and, and product specific offerings. Um, in terms of like protocols we support, Silicon Labs we call them segments. So, for example, the segment I oversee is predictive maintenance and condition monitoring. So there are a multitude of segments. We have fleet telematics, we have asset tracking, smart building, smart home, factory automation, so many to count. Of course, they're all on the data sheet because we realize, you know, you don't want to put people in bins. Like, you know, Wi-Fi is for this. Like Wi-Fi could be in a number of different applications. Um, you know, it's an interesting question to answer because I can name you hundreds of applications that are protocol agnostic, right? You'll see, you'll see Wi-Fi in the factory and you'll see Bluetooth in the factory. I think it'd be fair to say you don't want to pigeonhole basically the the uh, the different the, the, what your chips can do in the, in the markets which they work. You don't want to pigeonhole pigeonhole into one specific sort of area. As little as possible, right? Like you know, obviously, yeah. everyone brought their use cases to the conception of the parts, and we you know we're validating them across different markets. But essentially, like yeah, they're they're meant for multiple applications. So. If we look at the protocols themselves, Wi-Fi 6 is great because it has a better range. So you can imagine in a smart building or a smart factory, uh, those have their advantages. And then same thing, sub gigahertz mm. in a crowded 2.4 space, like in an office or in a factory, the, the advantage for sub gigahertz is range. Uh, certainly if you're in metal containers or a lot of metal interference, sub gigahertz has loads of advantages. So both those parts um, bring a host of applications and the point being is they all support that MVP engine which you know the customer can, can really expand upon. Fantastic. Now on the topic of predictive maintenance what's the biggest challenge that you guys see when it comes to customers trying to implement predictive maintenance in their applications? Most fundamental advancement in predictive maintenance is moving from wired to wireless right that's why Silicon Labs has these customers in the first place. Um, it, it allows a lot more flexibility. If you remove all these wires, uh, you can communicate wirelessly, either to your gateway, to the cloud, to a device. So that's one, one major breakthrough. The idea of predictive maintenance uh, kind of expands upon condition monitoring. So to quickly define what that is, you know, condition monitoring has a sensor, has a threshold. Once a threshold is surpassed, you send a notification. It's very one dimensional, it's very static. What predictive maintenance brings into it, and that's where the AIML comes into it, is you know the keyword being predictions. So you're training a model, you're detecting anomalies. So on that front, the largest challenge is collecting your time series data and fitting your your model, training your model so that it either continuously learns or you know is, is adaptable, is scalable. You haven't underfit your model. You don't have, a, you know, for example, if you don't have enough data or if you have too much data, those are challenges we're seeing uh, in model training. Now, just before we uh, wrap up this podcast, I'm going to ask you the same question each uh, one after the other. Let's start with Tristan first. Um, if there are engineers out there who are watching this video and they want to get stuck into Silicon Labs offerings, what would you advise they do? Again, start with the works with. You can go even the quickest Google of Silicon Labs. I'm, I'm quite confident it'll point you to that conference. You can find a host of different applications, topics. Um, and I would say start with the application and let the application dictate your partner, your protocol, and the part. Don't, don't start with the solution first. Um, you know, let, let our expertise dictate why we think this protocol and this amount of memory and this processor. So yes, definitely begin with a lot of our, our one pages, our white papers, our conferences. We have works with conference. We have tech talks all on predictive maintenance uh, with links to our partners and cool videos and examples they're doing. If not, you go to the GitHub. If you're more hands-on, we have a host of different protocol examples, leveraging different sensors, all with machine learning. So more content you could ever need, really. So then the next step is reach out, get a kit, speak to an engineer. Um, you'll funnel your way back to the application owner. Might, might, might be me in the future. Uh, we may speak again, and uh, we'll make sure we set you up with the right tool for what your application needs.
Fantastic. And what would you recommend uh, to that question, Tomas? The single source of truth maybe is that if you go to our marketing page, um, select from the menu item the, the machine learning section, and on uh, on there, there you will find the landing page. Uh, and based on the application you want to develop, whether if it's audio or vision or time series data, you will be able to find a lot of examples that either we provide on our GitHub page or or partners are are, are doing for us. Fantastic. Well, thank you ever so much, guys, for joining us today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.